There's a common theme among people who come into our office looking for some advice and a question that we hear a lot. Am I saving enough for retirement? And the interesting is that thing about this is that it, they can be new to investing or they could have been investing for a long time and they're looking down the barrel of retirement. Everybody wants to know the answer to this question. So that's what we're going to cover today on Talking Sense. And I've got Alec Darrell from our Conway office here with me today to talk through this topic. So thank you, Alec, for joining me. Of course. We were talking about this the other day. We all know when we're working towards any goal, we want to know if we're doing enough. And that doesn't matter what kind of goal it is. You know, with fitness goals, for instance, this is the one that came to my mind when I was writing this was I spent probably two months, you heard me whining, (laughs) frustrated because I was working my butt off, not losing a pound, not losing an inch. I thought I knew what I was doing. And then I engaged with a trainer and started working out with his leadership and I'm starting to see those results. Have you ever had that experience where you're like, you think you're doing all the things right and then you go, oh wait, I missed something. Yeah, mine, I I think it's in the exact same realm. Mine would be fitness. I was trying to cut weight for summer, get washboard abs, and I wasn't tracking progress, but Mm -hmm. I got that little my fitness pal app looked at calories and you really see how much you're eating i think you can you did the same thing with your trainer tracked calories and you're like oh i just ate a thousand calories for lunch that's what's setting me back and yeah. it's it's really good to be able to see your progress and see the actual data in front of you to know if you're doing the right stuff or if you need to alter your plan a little bit And I think when it comes to financial goals, sometimes the first step is just to identify the goal because people will say, am I saving enough? And my first answer is, for what? Mm -hmm. For what? What is the goal? So let's talk about some of those. Whether it's emergency savings or retirement, they do have, you have to have kind of a basic understanding of your expenses. So, you know, those are two common savings goals is, you know, putting money back for an emergency and putting money back for retirement. But often people don't even know what their monthly expenses are. So for us to help them define that, that's step one. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to their emergency fund, we're looking for three to six months worth of those expenses. I think a lot of people think we're looking for their take home pay, but for some people, they don't need that much to just sustain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of where we go with that. But with retirement, it's a little bit different. Let's talk through that. Yeah. With retirement, you know, your, your income is going to change because, or, well, not your income, but your expenses are going to change because it's a different lifestyle. You know, mm-hmm. you're not going to work. You're not spending money on gas probably as much because you're driving to work every single day. So there's certain things that may go down as well as food. You're not eating lunch every day at a restaurant or however you eat lunch when you're at work. So they may go down, but on the flip side, you have more free time. Do you have mm-hmm. expensive hobbies? Are you traveling more? So you can have a a baseline of what your expenses are now, but once you get to retirement, you, normally it goes down, but sometimes it can go up. So it's really good to kind of be in touch with your finances. So, you know, mm-hmm. Hey, I need this amount each month. Now I'm going to need this amount in retirement. And it's important to think about expenses that may be taken away as well. You talked about gas, you talked about maybe if you eat, eat out a lot at work, but one that a lot of people don't know how to handle is their mortgage. For some, they think, oh, I'll just pay it off with a distribution from my employer plan and we just about have a heart attack because that's a lot of you know taxable income. But if you are on track to pay off your mortgage, that has a dramatic impact on your expenses. So you've got to really be able to figure out what your goal is and define it a little more carefully if you want us to help you know if you're saving enough. The next thing we've got to do is an evaluation of what resources you have and what resources you you need. And in this particular section, we're going to focus on retirement um, because that is, you know, that's our specialty after all. So that's where we know the most. But before we get into that, let's talk about that emergency fund real quickly. And something that I have found to be really helpful, you need an easy button. So one thing you can do is have a certain amount from your paycheck directly deposited into your savings account. So you never see it, never hit the bank. You're not going to think about spending it as easily. But we're going to move on to retirement from there. There's your little kind of pro tip on emergency savings. But when we're focusing on retirement, what are some of the resources to consider? I'll pause right here. What do you mean? (laughs) (laughs) I know we're not live, so I could like. Yeah. So that next line is talking about pensions. Do you have one? Do you have access to one? All of that. Okay. 
just jump into the mm-hmm. different vehicles. So, so when we're talking about retirement, you've got to understand what resources you have access to, what resources you need to consider. And there's some really kind of common ones to discuss that we can really get into detail about. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the different vehicles you have for retirement now, it depends where you work. One thing that used to be really common was pensions, but Mm -hmm. those are kind of going away generation to generation. That was the main source of income in retirement other than social security. But now it's kind of leaning more towards your retirement plans like 401ks, Mm -hmm. their employer plans or 403bs, depending on where you are. And we recommend getting that match. If if your mm-hmm. employer matches, has a good plan, it's a hundred percent return on your first money. That is the first place to look for retirement if it is an employer plan and not a pension. Mm-hmm. Um and then if they don't have a good employer plan and you maybe want to go and outsource, then that's when you can start opening IRAs. You've got traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, and um Yeah, is there any that I'm missing right now? I would say for small businesses, a lot of people don't realize that they have access to small business employer plans. That's something I wanted to touch on. We've been doing some training on taxes and how to like read tax returns and understand those taxes. And something came up in that training today that I think is really pertinent to this. And it talked about how people will sometimes spend a dollar to save 30 cents. And we were talking about how small businesses will buy stuff to bring down their income for the year when they could be using an employer plan to defer that save on taxes there, but they're not just buying random stuff they don't need. So, you know, if whether you're using an employer plan, you're putting towards a pension program, you're using your IRAs, those are the vehicles that are the most efficient for saving for retirement. Now, there is some talk out there about Social Security and whether it's going to be there at all. Um, You know, most of the research we read says that benefit could possibly be lowered. The full retirement age may be increased, but it would take a literal act of Congress to stop Social Security altogether. And the way it's structured is such that the benefits we're paying in this month are going to somebody next month. So it will likely change, but I don't know that it's necessarily going to be gone altogether. Yeah, we have a lot of clients ask us about that. And we always say, like, whatever president or politician does that, it's political suicide. Yes. Because... That no one's going to pitch that idea. No one's going to go for it. And Nobody wants to be the guy that killed no, it you know, they, or the lady. They don't. That's that's going to go down as one of the worst pe- like presidents or officials of all time. But mm-hmm. um, we have clients that will say, I don't know if I'll get Social Security. And they're like five years out from retirement. And they'll pan over <laughs> to like, me. Hey, you're good. And see you're me, good. the 23-year-old. They're like, there's no way you're getting it. And <laughs> I think robots will be taking over by then but we'll oh, see. okay okay so you're going for <laughs> the terminator know. approach okay yeah <laughs> um there are other investment vehicles too uh, to be clear if all you're doing is getting your employer match chances are it's not enough so you need to think about what other vehicles you can utilize we talked about iras we talked about the employer plan there are also just plain old investment accounts that you can use if you need to put some more towards there to be clear an inheritance is not and i repeat not a retirement plan I have actually had someone sit in my office and tell me, well, you know, we'll inherit all this land that we can sell eventually, and that'll be our retirement. And I went, are, are, is, is the person who owns that land unhealthy? Like, it's coming, like, in the next year? Well, no, no, they're great. They're great. They're in their 50s. Oh, so in, like, 40 years, you might get this. But you're also in your 30s, so are you planning to wait? Just don't plan for that. You know, count on Social Security at least a little bit, but... Let's leave the inheritance out of it. It can be the icing on the cake. So understanding what resources you have is important. Understanding what your goal needs to look like. And then getting a realistic estimate. There are a lot of online tools that offer you estimates. Many of them, if you have an employer plan, it'll say, well, here's how much income you could have. But if you look deep into what goes into those, sometimes the rate of return is unrealistic. Sometimes your distribution rate is not realistic. I've seen one that said they could take out 7% when they were in their like 60s which is way too high. It's going to deplete those assets. So make sure you understand that. And, and let's talk about what we tend to use because we, we tend to err on the side of conservative, but many people look at that and go, wow. but it's just because of history. Yeah, we, we take the worst years of the market and plan very conservatively and say, if the worst years happen again, this is what you'll get. It's, it's kind of taking that mindset of how can this plan fail? And we don't want to 
plan for the best years and then it falls short, we want to say, if the market fails us and it's not going well, we still know we have the income for you because I would rather show them bad numbers on a sheet of paper and then in real life it outperforms that and show them great numbers on a sheet of paper and just get lucky if, if it even lives up to those expectations. Yes, and I think people that we work with appreciate that. We often use, if you're looking at 20 years or more, we're only going to use probably an 8% rate of return because of what history has taught us about kind of the worst periods of time. And then on the flip side, you know, there was always the 4% rule. Uh, anybody who's worked with investing for very long knows that most people would recommend a 4% rate of withdrawal because supposedly the market will beat it every year. The challenge is years like 2008, where the market was down 40%. You know, if you had a million dollars and you've been taking 4%, that's 40000 a year. In that year, if you're taking 4%, you're walking away with 24000 mm-hmm. So you might have lost your job. You Well, if you're retired, I guess you haven't lost your job. But things have definitely gone up. Inflation goes up when there's a recession, typically. And you're dealing with all of this chaos financially, and you walk away with $16,000 less that year? That's not realistic. Most mm-hmm. people can't take a pay cut. Their electric bill didn't go down. But if you go ahead and take the 40, you're now at almost 7% distribution rate, which we've already shared is not sustainable. No. So we don't tend to ascribe to just a 4% you know, distribution rate and a 60-40 allocation, all, that, all of that that has kind of been the norm for a long time. We just don't ascribe to that. We tend to go with you know, more of a managing what we can, bucketing the rest. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, about our entire bucketing mm-hmm. strategy. Yeah, so with our bucketing strategy, we, like Teresa said, we don't really believe in doing a 60-40 portfolio and having all your assets in one fund. We really like to have your cash for your income just sitting aside. That way, whatever the market does, it doesn't matter. It's ready for you. The market could go down 20% and you know my income won't change that year. And then on the back end, you've got funds that are growing and in between, you've got a little bit of blended, some alternative investments. Mm-hmm. And that way, you've got a lot of diversity. You've got different buckets with different investments with different time horizons. And um, that really allows your money to kind of hedge itself. Like some That's of the, our goal, at least. Certainly. Yeah, that's our goal. Some of the money will go up with the stock market. Some will go up with interest rates. And some aren't based on either. So mm-hmm. it's... It's a really good way to ensure you've got your income now. And then if you end up living 30 years, you've got that same amount of income waiting on you on the back end. And we, what we are trying to do through this is we, we control what we can. So we talk about how regular dependable expenses need to be taken care of through regular dependable sources of income. And we have some tools at our disposal to take care of those guaranteed needs that we can plan for now, even if you're not retiring for 30 years. We can still talk through where we need to be to fund that. And then we take the rest of it and we go, okay, what makes sense for when you're going to need this money? It's no different than if you're saving up for a car. You're going to put a certain amount into a bucket and you're going to let it sit and grow. And then you're going to pull it out when you need it. Same thing. Because you don't need to hit a stop sign at retirement and just go super conservative because inflation will eat you alive if you do. Um, But you want to be reasonable and responsible with that. Um, So really, ultimately, what we're talking about here is doing what you can and then getting a check in. Use the tools you have available. Get that employer plan match. Add your IRAs when you're ready. Increase savings every single time you get a raise. Those are things you can control. And then get a check-in. That's when you call Alec. That's when you call one of our advisors and you say, hey, I'm making some moves. I want to make sure I'm on track. And you get in our office and you talk to somebody about your plan, making sure that you are doing the things you need to do to reach the goals that you've discovered you have. And you've got to check it from time to time. You know, I have someone who... I started working with him. They were single. He was in his low 50s. He's doing fantastic, but he was single. Now he's married. So we talked about how we need to redo the plan now that he's married because things changed. It's really important that as life happens that you do that as well. So it's time for our two cents. Alec, I'm going to let you go first and share kind of your final thoughts on this topic of saving enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my two cents would be reach out and get somebody with a different perspective, somebody else that can help you. Um, Someone in our industry, we have more uh, expertise, more knowledge, more experience, and we can take that emotion out of it as mm-hmm. well. And um, we also have the software to to see where you've been, where you're going, what you're doing, and uh, where we can get you. So I think 
getting some professional advice can really help you learn more and also have that little accountability factor. Yes. And I'm going to take that to the next level. You know, when it came to my fitness goals, I didn't go see a, you know, hearing specialist to help me with my fitness goals. I went to someone who specifically helps people with their fitness goals. I think sometimes we go to general practitioners for things where we need a specialist. And in our industry, there are a lot of general practitioners, but they don't have specific training when it comes to retirement income planning, which is what we do from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday is retirement income planning. So if your goal is to really refine your approach, make sure you're seeing someone who has the right skills to get you there. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you, Alec, for being here with me. Alec Darrell out of our Conway office. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks for listening to Talking Sense. And if you like what you hear, make sure and subscribe to the podcast to get all the newest episodes. The Gym Wealth team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or by calling our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. And while we like to have fun here, we're also financial advisors, and that means disclosures. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment and no strategy can assure success. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Independent Advisor Alliance. Independent Advisor Alliance and Gemwell Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. 